Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today we are talking about how to find an unknown angle in a right angled triangle using tri trigonometry and this is aimed at students from grade 9 to 12. We're going to look at some worked examples and then talk about what's coming up next. But before we get started, why don't you just quickly check and make sure your calculator is in degrees mode. We did cover how to do this a couple of videos back, but if you need to have a calculator, it might look a little differently to this one. Just make sure that there's a little D in the top window. If you've got a little R, you need to change into degrees mode. So let's get started. Do you recall some key ideas from our previous videos? Let's see how good your memory is. Firstly, do you know how to label a right angle triangle? We take our angle that we're given or that we're trying to find and and then we label hypotenuse, opposite side in reference to that unknown angle, and our adjacent. Then our next step is remembering those trigonometric ratios, sine, cosine, and tan. And you'll remember our little memory tool, Sokotoa. And remember, that's not a formula, it's a memory tool. So let's talk now about how do we find an angle. It follows a similar process to finding an unknown side. We firstly label our sides. Secondly, we choose the right formula based on what we've been given and what we need to find. We write our formula down. We substitute into the formula. We transpose our algebra and then solve with a calculator. And we need to write a statement if we're working on a word of problem. So let's start with our first worked example. We need to find this unknown angle theta in this triangle shown below. We've got two sides, a 15 and a 23. Don't know what the length of the hypotenuse is. We could find that out with Pythagoras' theorem, but that's a whole lot of unnecessary work. We don't need to find the other side. We need to find the unknown angle. So firstly, we're going to label that triangle. So we know our hypotenuse. It's the side opposite the 90 degree right angle. And our opposite side is always in reference to the angle we're given or the angle we're trying to find. So that means our 15 centimetre side is the opposite side, which leaves our leftover adjacent sitting next door at 23 centimetres. So now that we've got that information, we need to think about what formula we want to choose. I'm going to think about what information I've been given, which is the opposite side and the adjacent side. So I'm going to choose the tan formula, TOA, from Soccer TOA. So I write my formula and then I'm going to substitute into the formula the information I've got, 15 over 23. Now we want to get theta all by itself and make it the subject. You might be thinking, well, hang on, there's a 10 with it. I've never encountered a word with an algebra before. How do I get the algebraic symbol or theta all by itself? Well, we need to do what's called the inverse of 10. It's kind of like the opposite of 10. Normally when we move things around in an equation, we take things to the other side of equation, we undo that function by doing the opposite. So if we've got a number on this side that's added to this side of the equation, and we want to move it to that side, we take it away from both sides. Or if we've got a number that's part of a fraction and it's the denominator and we want to remove that part of the denominator, we multiply. So we're undoing that. An inverse function is the opposite of the normal function. So the inverse of tan is the opposite of tan. The inverse of cosine and sine is the opposite of sine and cosine. So our calculator thinks about what angle is needed to produce a tangent of equal to 15 over 23. This is all loaded into your calculator already. Let's have a look at it there now. So here's my calculator. Let's look at how to actually do the inverse of 10 on a calculator. I'm going to press my shift button and then press 10. You'll notice above the 10 button, there's a 10 with a minus one. That's my inverse 10 button. So shift, then 10. It'll be the same for sine and cosine. And then I'm simply going to put this fraction, which is my ratio of my sides, 15 divided by 23, into the calculator and press the equals button. It is that easy. You're going to love finding angles using trigonometry. So we found the angle is equal to 33.1134196 degrees. We now need to round that in an appropriate way. Most of the time we're asked to round to the nearest degree. In that case, it would be 33 degrees. I've decided to do this to one decimal place, 33.1 degrees. Always read your question carefully. I notice a lot of students forget to look at the question and see how to round properly. Let's look at worked example two. This one's a little bit more complicated. It's a word problem, and I'm going to use Polya's C plan do check model for problem solving with this one. 
A 15 metre mast on a boat had a steel cable connected to the top that ran to the deck of the boat. The cable was 20 metres long. What angle did the cable make with the deck of the boat? Now, some of us have never been on a boat before and it's a little bit hard to understand from the question what's being asked of us. Sometimes questions do have context we're not familiar with and it's nothing wrong with going and Googling and finding out a little bit of information. So let's have a look at the key information in this question. I've highlighted that in yellow. We've got that 15 metre mast. You may not know what a mast is. We've got a cable. So a cable is a type of wire. It runs from the top of this mast to the base of the boat, the, the deck. So let's find out, we're trying to find an angle, what is that angle? So firstly, those three parts of the boat, the mast, the deck and the cable are all going to form three parts of a right angle triangle. We've got this cable that runs down um, from the top of the boat to the bottom of the boat. We've got this mast, which is actually a kind of timber or metal pole that holds the sails up. And then we've got a deck, which is the part that people walk on and that's the base of the boat. So these three parts of the boat are going to form a right angle triangle. So it's a good idea to draw a picture. It obviously doesn't have to be as detailed as this yacht picture. You can draw something fairly simple. It's just important to label it with all of the important information. So I've got my diagonal, which is the steel cable. It's 20 meters long. I've got my mast, which is 15 meters and the deck. I don't know how long this section of deck is. I don't need to know. What I do need to know is that angle that it's forming with the base of the boat. So now I've got all of the information I need to solve. That's why it's important to draw a decent picture. Now I'm going to label my sides in relation to the unknown angle. The opposite side is 15 meters, the hypotenuse is 20 meters and now I need to choose a formula. I've got an O, I've got an H from Sokotoa. Oh, Sok means I'm going to use the sine formula opposite over hypotenuse. So now it's time to substitute into that formula and solve it. So I've got 15 over 20 and remember what we did with tan before? We take the word tan to the other side. We're going to do that with sine. Sine goes onto the other side and becomes inverse sine. Sine to the power of minus one and that is to the 15 over 20. And you can do this on your calculator. Why don't you have a go yourself and see if you get the same answer as me. And the answer is the angle is 48.6 degrees. Now, you might also want to consider rounding that to the nearest degree, which would be 49 degrees. Now we haven't finished. We need to write a statement. So that's part of our check process. So I'm going to write a statement. The angle the cable makes of the deck is 49 degrees. But checking your answer few other things is quite important to make sure you've done the right thing. Firstly, ask is your answer logical? Well, we know we've got a 90 degree angle with our triangle. So anything that's more than that is wrong. And if I get a negative number, we can't have negative angles. So that's wrong as well. So that's two little quick logic checks you can do. You can also check your rounding and make sure it's appropriate. In this question, we weren't asked, but often angles are rounded to the nearest whole number. So just check your question, make sure you've rounded appropriately as well. Make sure you've provided the units of measurement and because this is an angle, you need to use degrees. And also just check all of your steps of working. Working should be the formula and then anything you do to manipulate algebra or to work on your calculator, you should show every single step. And here we can see to find an angle, it's pretty quick, four steps. You should also recheck your diagram as well. Just reread the question, make sure you haven't forgotten any information that's in that question, and also make sure your diagram has all of the annotations and notes on it that you need to solve the problem. Well, that's all we have time for today. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, why don't you like and subscribe to the channel and let us know in the comments. Always love to see the things people have to say. It's always amusing or makes me feel great. So thank you for doing that. And why not tell a friend or a teacher that you found this video to be of great value. You could also um, watch some of our upcoming videos. We're going to talk about angles of elevation and depression, bearings, applications with non-right angle triangles and the unit circle and much, much more. And you could also comment um, on Facebook or on Instagram. You can contact us there in direct messaging or through mccutcheymass at yahoo.com if you have any questions or suggestions. And I'd like to say thank you so much for joining me here at McClutchy Mass today. I'm Natalie McClutchy. Have a wonderful day.